This episode of Seasons at Home is sponsored by Don Gagliardi Realtor and Better Built Basements. Welcome to Seasons Magazine Celebrates the Home. I'm your host, Natasha Lubchenko. We're bringing you tips and ideas for whether you're buying, selling, or just want to make your home a space you never want to leave. On today's show, tips for navigating this real estate market, we sit down with an expert, plus an inside look at a $60 million Connecticut castle and the iconic glass house. But first, Better Built Kitchens and Baths is helping homeowners create the space of their dreams. Ashley Cole has more. Your home is a place where you make memories with your loved ones, with your children, with friends, and oftentimes it's a place that you never want to say goodbye to. And good news is, you don't have to. I'm here with Wayne Sirota from Better Built Builders. Wayne, it's great to be back with you. Nice to see you again. We are in this dream home that you have come into and completely renovated to make your clients' dreams come true. Exactly, yes. Tell us more about how a person can stay in the home that they've always loved, but make it the home of their dreams. Right. So in this case, the homeowner had many years of thinking about what they wanted to do, what renovations they wanted to make, and really it boiled down to opening the whole space up and redoing a piece in each room. And this home is about 50 years old? Yes. Yes. And so design-wise, it's different than a lot of the homes that are being built today. But what you can do is come in and create a whole new space. Exactly. Well, let's go on a tour. I've already had a sneak peek, but I really want to show everyone the transformation that you've done in this amazing space. So Wayne, let's start at our very first stop on our tour. What are we looking at right now, this picture? So originally, this was a brick fireplace. Uh, We changed the color to the brick, and it was a wood fireplace. We changed it to a gas. I couldn't even believe when I saw that picture that it was the same wall. Right, yes. So we did a built-in up here for the TV and for all the wiring, refaced this. We actually had to build the chimney all the way up and redo the flue at the same time. But anything is possible, really. I mean, there's so many things that people look at or hear about or see on television and they ask you, can you do it? And and oftentimes it's, yeah, we we can figure out a way to make that happen. Right, yes, it's all about picking the right company. As I always say, (laughs) you know, to be able to handle the job. And this customer is very happy. (laughs) All right, the next stop. Right now we're looking at a photo of sliding doors and what was this room before? This was a screened in porch with sliding doors and some windows over there. Okay, big reveal, here we are. And you've turned it into? A nice sit in, eat in breakfast area. This is yes. beautiful. All beautiful the natural cabinets, that comes in. refrigerators, upper cabinets. Very nice. And also through this door over here is a mudroom. The mudroom, yes. Tell us more yes. about that room. It's a mudroom, and we did a built in for cubbies and for hanging clothes, putting away shoes, that sort of thing. All right, Wayne, so we're still downstairs. Right now, we're looking at a photo of this wall that has just a window. Two in windows. It. Yep. yep, two windows, yep. yes. And what you've taken is this wall and created this. Yes, with built ins, custom built ins to the exact dimensions of this open area. And if someone has some questions or isn't quite sure about how to transform a space, then you can help them, help them design something that works for their family. Right, when they tell us they want a bench and some book cases, our carpenters actually come out and draw it out for them and talk to them about how they want the top to look, what kind of trim, and so we customize it. Where we're standing now is where there used to be a wall, right, right. Lane? Two walls, yes. Two walls, okay, yes. so tell yes. us more about that. Yes. So. The homeowner had said they wanted a completely open concept. So we ended up taking down this wall and this wall, putting up a steel beam here to hold the weight from upstairs. Mm -hmm. It was um, done with a structural engineer as well as an LVL um, beam to hold this part of the the wall up. This dining room was its own room, the kitchen was its own room, and now it's all open and everyone can enjoy the space all together. This is a really popular design concept right now. Yes, exactly. So it's all new ceiling. It was popcorn ceiling all the way across, new lights in the ceiling, recessed lights, and pendants, all that stuff. Well, as always, you do an amazing job. And I want to talk more about Better Built Builders because you take pride in the work that you do. It's so important for you to always touch base with the customer every step of the way from the beginning to the end. And I know this because I've talked to the homeowner and she does sing your praises. 
and it really does set you apart. Thank you. So it's important that uh, we understand exactly what the customer, what their end game is, exactly what they want to do. We put it on paper for them and do a drawing and we go back and forth, discuss it to make sure that we've got exactly what they want. Of course, during the project, little things change. They change their mind. Some things don't work. So we adjust them, talk about them. We show them what we think would work and then go forward from there. And your attention to detail is really impressive as well. Yes. So it's, it's, it's not just every step of the way we check in, we talk, but also making sure that it is the best quality, the best presentation, right. always. Yes. So one of the most important pieces we believe is that pretty much everybody in the house who works for us, they're all employees. We don't do a lot of subbing. Uh, we do have a plumber on the outside who's excellent and they, they're the sub. But other than that, everything's controlled in-house. So we know exactly the timing of everything, how it's gonna work, and it's done to the owner's specs. And that's important to mention. Yes. Well, that's why you're called Better Built, right? Yes, yes. Right. <laughs> you are better. Exactly. We are. There is a better way. <laughs> that's right. Let's <laughs> yes. head into the kitchen. Here we are in this beautiful kitchen. I mean, anyone that looks at this would say, I would love for that to be my it's kitchen. It's amazing, yes. Let's take a look at the before photo. Clearly a big difference for sure. Yes. Tell us what you did. Yes. So basically, of course, we opened it, uh, opened it up completely, gave them a huge island. This is quartz on top of the island. Love this. Um, the homeowner has the opportunity. They pick all this out. They're going to pick out the cabinets. They work with us in our office to pick cabinets, and we have samples in our office of all of this. Yes. So there's some really cool features in this kitchen, some nice updates. Let's yes. show some of those off. Yes. Of course, we have, uh, this is a stainless steel um, apron on the front of the uh, sink. We have undercut cabinet lights, tile backsplash, um, a beautiful hood that's exhausted outside, mm -hmm. or vented outside, I should say. It also has lights in it and a beautiful gas range. So this would be my happy place, no yes. doubt about it. So yes. tell me about what you did in this space. Yes, so of course we added a tub, a standalone tub, which has become very popular today. Mm -hmm. Beautiful tile floor, a walk-in shower with a threshold that matches the edging and with the same stone all the way around. And then a wonderful tiled shower with a niche down below here for shaving legs and then a niche in the wall and then two shower heads. Wayne, it's been great going around the house and taking a tour with you and seeing all the amazing updates that you did here. I think the, the biggest thing that people will take away is the realization that the home that you love and the location you love can be your forever home. You can create anything in your space. Right. All right, so I have made myself at home and I made us some microwave popcorn to celebrate the amazing work that you did. Um, we have to figure out how to open this yes. drawer microwave now. Just push oh, right just here. push open. Right. Okay. And look at there that, Wayne. What do you we say? Did it. We did it. Bon appetit. Yes. Cheers to you. Thank you. <laughs> Scott Haney here in another amazing basement from Better Built Basements. What an incredible job they did here. Just beautiful. They'll take your home improvement project to a whole new level. These guys are professional, punctual, and they really do a great job. They've been transforming basements for years all over the state and have hundreds of satisfied customers. They'll turn your vision into a reality and make your basement a beautiful and functional space. Give my friends at Better Built Basements a call today and let them take your basement from unfinished to unbelievable. My name is Dawn Gagliardi. I am on the Corrado Group at Caldwell Banker. I am a real estate agent and I work with both buyers and sellers. I currently live in West Hartford, Connecticut, which is actually where I grew up. I cover all of the greater Hartford area and all of Connecticut. I also have a great team of realtors and connections all throughout the country so I can help people buy or sell a home anywhere in the country. I'm able to help my clients buy their perfect homes and sell their homes for top dollar. If you buy a house, do you have a bathroom, a kitchen that needs some love? It can be overwhelming. Is this for you? Is this for your budget? This is the fun part. We help you get it right. So many parts and pieces coming together at once, and that's why you need somebody who does tile all the time. At Tile America, we like to make it fun. Tile America, amazing showrooms, insightful advice. And don't forget to check out our outlets in New Haven and West Hartford. 
Did you know there's a castle in Woodstock, Connecticut? And no, it's not a historical landmark or a hotel. It's actually someone's home. And get this, it's on the market for $60 million. Woodstock, Connecticut, the second largest town in the state in terms of land with a small population. The area is known for its rich history, nature, and then there's this. So we are here at the Christmark Castle. John, we know it's big, but how big is it really? Well, 18,000 plus square feet. Wow. We have uh, a total of nine bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, all kinds of common area space. It's surrounded by a moat. To the back of the castle is a 90 acre pond called Potter's Pond. And um, that's the size, big. Big, and what about the area? We're in Woodstock, Connecticut. Is something this big common here? Not at all, no. <laughs> The home has been on and off the market for years and has recently been listed for an astounding $60 million. It was even featured on Zillow Gone Wild, a popular Instagram account featuring extravagant homes across the nation. I sat down with owner Chris Mark and his girlfriend Stevie Raquel to learn more about this mystical manor. So I just, I have to get some history here. Chris, talk to me about, you know, when you started building this castle and why. Well, I started building it around 2003 and it was built for my daughters who wanted to be princesses and um, so that's why I built it. In the architecture itself there's so much history right and you said it's gothic primarily the architecture yeah. and why did you choose that gothic? Well I just drew different roof lines and different things and I put them all together and that's how the castle came out. So, oh so you drew the castle up yourself? Yeah. That's incredible. Originally from Chicago, Mark is the descendant of a prominent steel pioneer, Clayton Mark, perhaps from who he got his inventive nature. And while that's a unique story in itself, let's go explore the rest of the castle. So we are here in what's called the Red Room. What is this space? Uh, this would be a, uh, a meeting room. This is where royalty would work with his advisors to determine what we're gonna to do today in the castle, what needs to be. Right, fitting. And so that was, uh, that was the, the purpose. And obviously you can tell who sat in what chairs. Right, I mean, <laughs> how, how tall do you think these chairs are, John? <laughs> My guess is uh, nine or 10 feet. And well, what I find amazing, and it seems like to be a theme throughout this house, is the clouds on the ceilings. Yes. Absolutely. Was th this was a created decision by, by Chris? Yes. Let's talk about the parts here that look like they're from another world. What are these pieces from? Well, he, uh, he traveled the world and he went to uh, architectural um, salvage yards, warehouses, and a lot of this is from old churches, old mansions. And uh, as they've told you, and I don't know all the stories, but every one of these doors has a story where it came from, wow. what it was used for. I like the gothic furniture the most. Like this, like what we're sitting in right now? Yes. The mantelpieces are all from different castles, different aristocratic houses. Each door actually has a story being an entrance to a burial ground um, wow. or a, a ship at sea. This is the balcony of the Red Room, and I think there's an interesting story behind all of the stone. Um, could you tell us about that? Yeah, so a lot of the stone was quarried right here on the, on the property. So Chris owns over 400 acres and uh, they found a quarry and they started quarrying a lot of the granite stone. And John, I have to ask you, just with how unique this place is, who do you think the buyer should be? Who, what type of person would fit in here? Well, it's going to take a very unique person. It's going to take somebody that uh, is eccentric in what they want, what they're looking for. Uh, I think everybody would like to live here for a week, a month. But you know, it takes a, a special personality to enjoy something of this stature and uh, you know, the antiquity that goes along with it. And speaking of antiquity. All right, naturally, like what you would expect in a castle, we've got some armor. Let's put this on, John. Should we shake hands? We should. I feel like we're like getting ready for a duel or well, something. Yeah. Let's joust. <laughs> this is, I actually just bought the house with that handshake. <laughs> <laughs> This armor lives right here in the master bedroom. And take a look at the master bath. This waterfall shower has been featured on the castle's TikTok account, which has over 350,000 followers. And people are pretty amazed. I noticed your daughter, I think Christine, is very active on social media with the castle. She has an Instagram, she has a TikTok. What do you think about her showing the castle off to the world? 
Well, I think it's great. You know, I think, you know, other people should be able to enjoy, you know, what we do here. And they found other ways to give people a glimpse inside the castle walls, renting the space for music videos, photo shoots, movies, and even weddings. I mean, look at this observation deck. Talk about amazing views. And as big as the castle is, the land around it is even bigger. It's 400 plus acres of water, a forest, and of course, naturally for a castle, there's a moat. Well, I wanted to make it um, an island, so um, that's why we made the moat. You're like in your own little world here, right? Yeah. And 400 acres, I mean, what do you do with 400 acres? That's what I want to know. What can you do with 400 acres? Well, we made, like, we have trails and roads, like 12 miles of trails and roads around the property that you can, you know, walk on. You can go ATVing or horseback riding. In an ideal world, are you ready to sell right now or are you still enjoying your time here? I'm still enjoying my time. And until he finds someone just eccentric enough to want to call this castle home, he's just happy to share his creation with the world. I mean, is that part of why you built something like this? You said it's like an art project. You get joy out of seeing people amazed by what you've created. Of course. How does, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I, you know, contributed something that's like kind of amazing. So I'm here with Maureen, homeowner. You had your basement done over by Bitter Built Basements. Tell me, tell me first of all what the experience was like. Oh, it was amazing. I, every day I could come down here at the end of the day and it was immaculately clean. You could walk across in bare feet um, and the transformation was just stunning. Were they punctual? Always. Professional? Always. They were friendly. They were very polite at all times. Call Bitter Built Basements today for a free in-home design consultation and save up to $3,000 with your new basement. Yes, you can. Take your basement from unfinished to unbelievable. You buy a house, you have a bathroom, a kitchen that needs some love. It can be overwhelming. Is this for you? Is this for your budget? This is the fun part. We help you get it right. So many parts and pieces coming together at once, and that's why you need somebody who does tile all the time. At Tile America, we like to make it fun. Tile America, amazing showrooms, insightful advice. And don't forget to check out our outlets in New Haven and West Hartford. My name is Dawn Gagliardi. I am on the Corrado Group at Caldwell Banker. I am a real estate agent and I work with both buyers and sellers. I currently live in West Hartford, Connecticut, which is actually where I grew up. I cover all of the greater Hartford area and all of Connecticut. I also have a great team of realtors and connections all throughout the country so I can help people buy or sell a home anywhere in the country. I'm able to help my clients buy their perfect homes and sell their homes for top dollar. There's no denying that the current housing market is unique, leaving both buyers and sellers with some questions. Luckily for us, Pat Lorre got some answers. Is now a good time to buy? What's going on with interest rates and how will that affect your purchasing power? Let's talk about it. Here to talk about all of this is Don Gagliardi with the Corrado team at Coldwell Banker Realty. So Don, a lot of things are changing. Is it really a good time to buy a house right now with interest rates all over the place? Well, yes, interest rates have definitely gone up over the past couple of months. Um, we're not sure exactly where they're going to end up, but one thing is for sure that home prices are going up. They've continued to go up over the past two years. And what we're seeing now is, you know, where you even start uh, a home is, you know, 10 to 20 percent over asking is where it will end up. So, um, you know, for people saying, oh, I just want to wait it out and maybe the interest rates will go down. They probably won't. And if you do end up waiting too long, the you know, home prices are going to continue to go up and up. So I think, you know, if you really want to purchase a home, if you don't want to rent anymore, if you want to give yourself some equity, uh, I think it's a great time to buy and, you know, Give me a call, I can help you out with that. <laughs> so it's interesting that it's still a hot market despite interest rates going up. Yeah, so the reason that is is because there's been so much pent up demand um, that started at the beginning of the pandemic. So all of these people decided, you know, I wanna focus on being a homeowner. I wanna focus on putting equity in my own pocket instead of renting and putting equity into someone else's pocket. And what that has done is, you know, there hasn't been enough inventory to satisfy that demand. So we still have a long line of buyers out there who are saying, we need to buy and there's just nothing to buy because the instant it comes on the market, um, it's going off the market. So yeah, it's still a really hot seller's market. We still are seeing bidding wars. You know, every single home that comes on it is going off the market very quickly. 
Yeah, so what can a buyer do to be prepared for that you know, moment that they see that home and they want to get it and there's so much competition, what would you recommend? So, you know, first and foremost, I would say, call me, call your realtor, um, and we will connect you with a really great local lender because you want to make sure that you've got all of the money, you know, put together all of your financials in place so that when you do put an offer in, it's very, very strong. Um, obviously, if you can buy in cash, that's amazing. A lot of people are doing that now, but that's not always possible. So just having your financials in order is the number one step, I would say. Um, at that point, we can kind of talk about, you know, waiving contingencies. People get afraid and scared and say, oh my gosh, I could never waive a contingency. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going in and we're looking with a very critical eye at the, you know, first walkthrough at the showing and saying, okay, we know that the furnace is older. We know that the roof, you know, is however old it is, but are you still willing to purchase it regardless of those things? So if that's the case, you know, you can potentially waive the home inspection or you could say we're still going to perform it, but it's really just going to be for informational purposes. Um, you know, the other thing with being pre-approved in this market with a great, you know, very well-known local lender is that, you know, you put that letter in someone's hand and you say, we are 100% getting to closing. We can waive that mortgage contingency and, you know, get, get that offer accepted, you know, almost as good as cash. So right now we're sitting in a home that has been staged and this is something that you really believe in. Tell me why is staging so important? What can it do to a sort of average home? So, you know, in this market, I get a lot of people saying, ah, oh, you don't even really need to stage. It's, you know, every home is selling very quickly, which is true. Um, but when you have a home that's put together that a buyer can walk in and say, oh, I don't have to do a thing. You know, this is just perfect. They can envision their family there. They can envision themselves there. They're going to be willing to pay that much more money. And that's the name of the game right now is to get the most money possible for the sellers because if they're selling, they have to go somewhere, right? So we need to put the most money in your pocket so that you can buy another home that you're gonna be happy with. Um, you know, staging takes away the guesswork. It's gonna be modern, clean, bright, open, and it's just really gonna take, you know, pictures very well. It's gonna show very well. We make sure that everything just really is set to the expectations that buyers have these days. So Don, part of staging, I guess, is also taking things away, right? Absolutely. So one of the biggest things you can do to stage your home is declutter. That means take everything off of your countertops, put everything away. Um, you just don't want anything cluttering up your space. I love the way this looks too. It just makes yeah. me feel clean, organized, and just sort of relaxed. Yeah, this is the way you wish that you lived and most of us don't. So what we say is, you know, especially countertops, we want to take most things away, but we do want to leave little touches to, you know, draw some interest and kind of show, hey, this is a home that's being lived in. So Dawn, I think when people think of staging, they think it has to be elaborate, but really maybe that's not the point, right? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things you can do with staging is to neutralize your space. So you'll notice in this home, we've got a lot of grays and tans and just very light kind of neutral colors. Um, we've also neutralized most of the staging with the furniture and with any type of decoration. Um, but adding a little pop of color is always good. You know, you see some flowers, you see a pop of color in a picture or, you know, some type of plant. Um, that's always great, but you do want to kind of make it as neutral as possible so that buyers can see themselves in the home. Welcome to my office. Of course, since the pandemic, the one room in the house that a lot of people are looking for, the home office. So when it comes to a home office, what's important? So with a home office, you want to show that you have enough space to work in. A lot of times you'll have a bedroom that really isn't that big. So using it as a home office is a perfect way to show buyers, you know, that they can work from home, especially now since the pandemic, a lot of us do that. Um, you want to show, you know, a little bit of interest, some books, some nice touches over here, you know, a nice globe is great, um, but you want to keep it very simple. You don't want to clutter the room. You want it to feel like, you know, just bright and open and I could get a lot of work done here. How important is the outside? Well, you certainly want to showcase any, you know, exterior features that a home has. So if you do have a nice pool, if you have a beautiful deck, you want to showcase that. Um, you also want to make sure that your home is nicely landscaped, so mowing the lawn makes a big difference. Um, if you want to you know, freshen up the mulch, that's great, but I wouldn't go too crazy with the exterior of the home. I'd really focus most of your energy on the inside. 
With the market hot and inventory still low, it's a great time as a seller to put your house on the market. But don't forget, building is also an option. And working with a builder and a realtor like Dawn, you can create the house of your dreams. For Seasons Magazine Celebrates, I'm Pat Laurie. And now, an inside look at an iconic Connecticut attraction, the Glass House. Pat Laurie has more. I always engage folks with what was their experience like up at the property. You know, this is a bucket list for a lot of people. On this rolling property in New Canaan, embraced by stone walls and tenured oak trees, sits a singular glass house, an architectural marvel by Philip Johnson, who used the 49 acres here to express his unique vision of life the way he wanted to live it. It's just such a simple idea to have this simple geometric shape um, all in glass and steel. And it's really all about the landscape. Um, it's, it's all about having a, a pavilion for viewing nature um, and for seeing this 49 acres all around you. When you step inside, you immediately experience a sense of serenity and simplicity. The kitchen, dining, living, and sleeping areas are all in one room. He really felt this is it would be ideal to, to be able to look out at nature all the time from every direction. Um, and I think that people are fascinated by that. Um, many people come and visit and think and, and wonder whether they'd really be able to live in a glass house. And some look around and think, I'm not sure I could do this. And others are like, oh, any day I could do this. The furnishings are sparse and meticulously placed edited for enjoying the outdoors without distraction, and it's cozy inside. One of the features inside the house is this cylinder, which has a fireplace on one side and a bathroom on the other. There's also radiant heat piping underneath the brick floor, but in the summer, the doors act as natural air conditioning. It's a different experience for every visit, in the rain, in the snow, and in the evening. I loved that you cannot come to the end of the experience at the Glass House, that every minute something is fresh and different because the outside is in. You never come to the end of the experience. And to me, that's kind of how I measure art. When something is so brilliant that you can't come to the end of it. Visitors might be surprised to learn that there are 14 structures on the property of the Glass House, including the Brick House, which was the guest house where famous friends like Andy Warhol stayed. Just up from there, a painting gallery built into a berm and a sculpture gallery inspired by a Mediterranean village. There's a building here for almost every decade of the 20th century in, in trends and architecture. And it starts with this very minimalist, modernist building that lets you enjoy the landscape. So it's really like an education. Absolutely, this place is an education. Johnson often referred to it as a diary of an eccentric architect, the whole place. The Glass House is an amazing place to see any time of the year. So make sure you put it on your list. Thank you for joining us for Seasons Magazine Celebrates the Home. We sure hope you learned something along the way, maybe got some inspiration. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit seasonsmagazine.com. You can also follow us on social. I'm Natasha Lubchenko, have a great day.